And right now, guess what? Another discussion one-on-one, -on -one, the News Now, in which the two accomplished leaders, one of the accomplished leaders from the News Now team and the organization shares with us all that he is doing to manifest peace and sustainability in the world today. Uh, and so, ladies and gentlemen, please do welcome Abdelaziz Alhamza, citizen journalist and human rights activist of the New Now. Good to see you. Sam here. Thank you. So you and I are sitting in New York City today, and uh, if we tried to sit in the same place, it probably would have taken us uh, double the duration of this conversation that we're about to have, given all that's happening. Um, and b before we get into what is so important about the new now, what, what inspired you, first of all, to be a citizen journalist and a human rights activist? So, like, um, I... I'm Syrian, so I'm from Syria, and being in such an authoritarian country or authoritarian, like in a country where it's ruled by an authoritarian regime, and when the Arab Spring started, I was so young, I was like in my early 20s, like 21, 22, and I was like part of the protest because I've seen how the government had been killing people. So I decided to join the protest and the protests were all over the country. And when I would go back home, watch TV, I didn't see anything on the TV because at the time the government prevented most of the international media agency to cover what's happening. And then the local TV ignored everything. So one, like the next day I went to the protest, I filmed everything, I did upload it on YouTube and my video was picked by all major TV channels. And at that time, I I discovered the power of media, the power of journalism, and I knew that with my old Nokia phone at the time, I could have make a change. So, and started this way. And uh, step by step, I was able to see the change that my friends and I were able to make as young people asking for, for freedom. Yeah, uh, we're, as both of us being journalists here, uh, Abdul Aziz, um, I think in, in the recent events that have happened globally, we understand, you've really underlined it, haven't you, the importance of being able to get out uh, what might be the facts uh, through transparency, uh, and they do not come cheap. And you understand this, news does not come cheap, and sometimes the counter narrative to that um, pushes uh, the very idea that it is cheap and it is not. And, uh, you know, uh, the new now was therefore a reflection of what drove you to become a journalist. What is the new now about? So the new now is an, uh, a collective or an organization of what we call it like young leaders. So there is seven of us from all over the world. Each one of us has been doing some work in different area and different like field. And we all came together to unite our forces and our power as young people that we were able to make change locally and then internationally so we can make like a big difference. So each one of us had like uh, an expertise on doing such things. So for us, we decided that we all need to put all our skills or all our power, all our focus on the table, coming together as a young people, as young people, as one force, so we can create like a bigger and a greater change. You know, Abdul Aziz, um... Thank you for your bravery to create uh, a new news organization. If you can, for a moment, um, I respond to that idea that I brought up a little bit earlier, that news is not cheap. And I think you being Syrian and discussing conflict in a space where this is not uh, favored, it is not supported. I'm saying something that you know and live, but most of those who are here at Peace Day Live do appreciate, but make it real for us for those of us who are not journalists. Yeah, so the thing is, like, as you mentioned, like, it's it doesn't come cheap. And for us, like, I'm talking about my own organization. I've lost so many colleagues because of the work that we were doing. So we were mainly focusing on former on ISIS territories. And ISIS, like, came after us all over. So I had my colleagues killed in Turkey. They came after me in Germany, had to stay under security protection. So for us, like, the, telling the truth didn't come cheap, as you mentioned. So we had to pay people's 
life for it and just like to clarify like then you know it's like a civil society organization so each one of us like do a different work like i work on journalism i have like other colleagues who work on and i also work on national and international security have like other colleagues who work on peace other colleagues who work on climate change so each one of us focus in a different field and we all came together as young people and we've been able to have like the support and the backup of big organization mainly virgin unite and, and uh one of the data points we don't like to follow up bill aziz when we're talking about journalism and journalists following conflict um there are 60 to 70 journalists on average over the last 15 years, as you know, with Reporters Without Borders who have followed these these numbers, 60 to 70 journalists um, like yourself trying to get to the truth in, in these, these conflict zones. Um, and that is sometimes forgotten. W what has inspired you in your storytelling when, you, when we recognize today, September 21st, the idea that someday on one day, not only that we would stop all conflict, but one day that we would have peace everywhere. Talk about what has inspired you that that may be possible given what you have done. Yeah, so the thing is, like, as I mentioned, like I came from a place that has been ruled by an authoritarian government for ages. And the thing is, like, without freedom, we you got no peace. So, and then, the government have been like pushing people not to be able to express themselves, not even like to have like a peaceful life. And when we be, when people were like asking for change, the government responded in a way that by like by killing them. So the thing is, we got like into a point that there was like no other way besides than beside fighting so we're f fighting like pushing back asking for freedom hoping to have peace one day so as as someone who was in a place where i've seen enough people being killed and arrested and tortured including me i was like i was like arrested multiple times so the thing is like going through all those things and seeing that uh, even like even like like seeing like other conflicts that happened before and how we were inspired so after i left i had i was forced to leave syria and then when i went to germany i and then i went to germany and germany was one of the countries that witnessed like you know two big wars and the way how you look at germany at the time nobody thought that germany would be the same way that it is right now so for me that was like another hope that you know nobody thought that germany would get to this stage so it was like another hope for me to push and keep fighting even though i'm outside 